All right, praise the Lord. Good to see you in our Wednesday night evening service. Facebook friend, we welcome you. Thank you for being here. Grab a hymn book in front of you and turn to page 384. And those who want to sing it in Spanish, Mom, Adelaida, uh, Elizabeth, page 419 in Spanish. 419. You English people want to learn how to sing in Spanish? Then borrow the Spanish book and go, go along with them. So page uh, 419 the Spanish and the English page 384 in the service of the king. And you know, uh, Brother Edgar, uh, he's so uh, passionate and so consumed by learning English that he don't want to sing Spanish anymore. He wants to sing English. Yeah. And that's what's going to happen when he learns English. He's not going to talk Spanish anymore. So uh, page uh, 384, think about it, in the service of the king, king of king, Lord of Lord, Jesus Christ. It's great to be, how many of you are glad you're in the service of the king? Great service, amen. Uh, Paul says in Philippians 1.21, for me to live is Christ. He was in the service of the king. For me to live is Christ and to die is what? Pain. So that means when you are involved in the greatest business of the world, serving the Lord, Jesus Christ, our chief commandant, our king, is gain when you die. It's not in vain. Amen? So uh, Jer Brother Jerry is going to lead us into this wonderful song, page 384. First Samuel chapter 18 one verse for this evening for our text verse verse 14 of first Samuel chapter 18 so first Samuel chapter 18 and verse 14 the word of the Lord reads and David behaved himself wisely in all his ways, and the Lord was with him. And maybe we'll read that one more time. Maybe all together we'll try to read it. Verse 14, And David behaved himself wisely in all his ways, 
and the Lord was with him. Amen. Please be seated. All right. 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 14 is a very familiar verse, right? I was doing my study earlier a few hours ago, and I kept going back to that verse. I could not get away from that verse. Before I leave 1 Samuel chapter 18, and we move on to chapter 19, I, I want the Holy Spirit to inject in our heart, to sink in our heart, that verse. Because the Word of God, uh, you know, we, we ought to live by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. That's Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. Uh, we don't live by emotions and feelings, by circumstances, uh, because if you live by emotions and feelings or circumstances, you're going to be like this, up and down. You'll be like this, inconsistent, up and down. One, one, one day you're spiritual, the other day you're carnal. One day you're uh, living by faith, the other way you're living by sight. One day you're joyful, the other way you're discouraged. No, you want to live like this, solid. And, and when you do that, when you live by every word. So we're going to continue our study in Saul's hatred of David. Uh, uh, let's pray. Father, bless this time, and I pray you help me to be a blessing, dear God, to my brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord, I'm, not, I'm no better than nobody here. I'm only a sinner saved by grace, trying to challenge other sinners to live for God, Lord, to live by faith, to put the Lord first. To walk by faith, not by sight. To be spirit-led, not, not flesh-led. So, Lord, I pray you give me the message, Lord. I mean, you give me the message, help me to deliver it effectively. And Carmen, as she trans, fill her with your spirit. Fill me with your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. So, we're going to talk, talk about, again, about Saul's hatred of David or Saul's... Uh, Jealousy of David, Saul's bad attitude of David. Because that's why you see he had a bad attitude. And then we see in contrast, David had a good attitude towards Saul. And you're going to see that contrast there. We could learn a lot from these passages from Saul and David in dealing with our attitudes. David trusts the Lord and he had a good attitude. Saul is not trusting the Lord, and we see that he has a bad attitude. David has faith in God, and he has a good attitude. Saul has no faith in God. He has faith in himself, and he has a bad attitude. You see the contrast here. So, you know, uh, in James, if you want to turn there real quick, uh, we'll go back to uh, 1 Samuel chapter 18. But in, in James chapter 1, it's good to be remind, reminded of this because in James chapter 1, in verses 2 and 4, uh, God uses the, the apostle James. This is the inspired word of God. And God is using the apostle James to challenge us to be careful about our attitude during trials. God wants us to have good attitude when we face difficult times when we face trials in our life, when we face, you know, problems or mistreatment where people, maybe you feel like you're treated unfair or any problem that you face, any difficulty, any trial, God wants us to respond to it with a good attitude. And we're going to see this in the book of James. James chapter 1 in verse 2. Notice James chapter 1 in verse 2 because it says, My brethren... Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. That word temptation is talking about testings, trials. That's what the whole uh, James is talking about there, uh, especially in the first, uh, I believe it's the first 10 or 12 verses. So he says, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations or testing, diverse, there are different kinds, different forms. Uh, so he says there that we are to rejoice when you find yourself in the middle of a trial. Do you see that or I'm making that up? It's in the Bible. We are to rejoice when you find yourself in the middle of a trial. The rejoicing is not because we're going through trials. 
because we know that we all, including myself, we all want to avoid trials and suffering if we can. So we're, he's not telling you to rejoice in the trial. Nobody likes trials. Nobody likes suffering. Nobody likes difficult times. Nobody likes obstacles and suffering. But we are to rejoice knowing the end of that suffering. That's what we need to rejoice. We are to rejoice knowing the end of that suffering. Look at what he says in verse 3. Because he explains it. Why we are to rejoice when we face trials, having a good attitude, a joyful attitude, a good attitude. Not because of the trial. Nobody likes trial. Because knowing the end of that suffering. Look at verse 3 of James chapter 1, verse 3. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith work it patience. That word patience is, is, talk, is endurance. And then in verse 4 of James chapter 1, verse 4, but let patience or this endurance, this spiritual strength that God wants to produce in us, but let patience have her perfect work. That you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. So we have to keep a good attitude by having a believing heart, knowing that God has a purpose to allow that suffering to try our faith. God is using problems that we don't like, that we want to avoid suffering, pressure. God is using it to test your faith, to strengthen your faith and my faith. To produce patient, endurance, spiritual strength in your life and my life. So knowing, verse 3, that the trying of your faith work at patient. And we need to let that trial fulfill its purpose. We got to let that trial fulfill its purpose. Like, 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 like a medication. When you take medication, you know, you got to let it run its course. It's not going to work right away. You got to let that medication run its course. We should not short circuit the development of patient. I'll say that again. We should not short circuit the development of patient, of endurance, of the spiritual strength God is trying to build in your life and my life. So, by cooperating with God by faith, we will become mature, well rounded Christians not lacking stability, and not lacking spiritual strength. And that's what I get out of that. It says in verse 4 of James chapter 1, verse 4, that you may be perfect, let's talk about mature, and entire wanting nothing. God wants us to become mature, well-rounded Christians, not lacking stability, not lacking spiritual strength. Without problems, we will never develop endurance and spiritual strength maybe that's worth repeating without problems we will never develop endurance or spiritual strength in fact let me give you let me give you some more verses because I, I'm trying to we're gonna learn here from Saul's life and David the contrast somebody has a good attitude somebody has a bad attitude Somebody's walking by faith, and the other one is walking by sight. Somebody's trusting in God with all his heart by faith. The other one is trusting himself. So God wants us to have a good attitude when we face problems. Let me take you to a verse, Proverbs chapter 18, just to build up this point. Proverbs chapter 18 in verse 14. Proverbs chapter 18 in verse 14. The book of wisdom, look what Solomon tells us in Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 14. Proverbs 18, 14. The spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity. But a wounded spirit, who can bear? The spirit of a man there, I believe it speaks of a man's inward emotional attitude. That's what I believe the writer's talking about. The spirit of man, I believe he's talking about the man inward emotional attitude. You and I need to keep our sweet spirit 
We got to keep a good attitude during bad times because this only happens when you keep your trust in God, not in yourself, just like David. Then it will produce a sweet spirit. It will produce a good attitude. It only happens when you trust the Lord. Not trusting the circumstances, not trusting in yourself, but trusting the Lord by faith. So, in Proverbs chapter 18, in verse 14, Solomon states here that when a man or woman is sick or deceased, his spirit, which means his good attitude, his sweet spirit can sustain him. Even though his body may be weakened or diseased, if his emotional attitude is strong and healthy, if he keep his eyes on the Lord, that attitude will sustain him throughout his physical sickness. Or any trial that you face. That's what he says. This is the word of God. That's what is important, that you keep your spirit right with God. You keep your attitude right with God, your heart right with God. And um, if the outer man is sickly, the inner man, listen, if the outer man is sickly, but the inner man is healthy, thou will sustain you. Thou will sustain you. Remember, uh, uh, I thought about 2 Corinthians chapter 4, in verse 16, that the apostle Paul talks about that we should not quit, we should not faint, we should not throw in the towel. We should not give up. And, and he's talking about, in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, in verse 16, he said that the outward man perishes. The old man, you know, our body physically wears out. You, you be falling and stumbling like Diane. She fell today and stumbled. She, she's not young anymore, you know. And, and um, I stumbled too. I fell many times. Any, any of you have fallen? And you know what? We don't have the strength that we used to have. We're putting a lot of miles in this physical body, right? We're wearing out. We're getting tired. But Paul says, he makes the contrast this, chapter 4, verse 16. He says, but the inner man is renewed day by day. That's what we're talking about. The inner man, the real you, the inside of you, your heart, you know, your spirit. Keep it positive. Amen. Keep your eyes on the Lord because it's going to carry you through, you know, when you face even physical suffering or, 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 or any, any trial that you face, it will help you sustain it. A heart that is fully trusting in the Lord is a heart that has a healthy inner attitude. And the healthy inner attitude can enable a person to endure physical suffering. And that's what I see here in that, in that verse, Proverbs chapter 18, in verse 14. A heart that is fully trusting in the Lord is a person that has a healthy spirit and a right attitude. And that healthy spirit and that right attitude can support the, weakened, the weak body and enable it to endure and to keep on keeping on. In fact, let me give you a verse, Psalm 112. Verse 7, this is a great verse for you to claim it and make it your life verse. It'll keep you, it'll keep your sweet spirit when you face difficult times. Again, we must live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. We don't let circumstances or problems control our life. We let the word of God control our life. And in Psalm 112, verse 7, look what it says. He should not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. What a verse. What a verse about having the right attitude, amen? It is imperative that we keep our eyes on the Lord, that our hearts are fully trusting in the Lord. It is imperative that we keep a sweet spirit, that we keep a healthy inner attitude that's going to help you to sustain your physical suffering or any suffering. A good attitude will help sustain our physical infirmity. It will help you sustain you through the trials of life. Look at it again, Proverbs chapter 18, verse 14. It said, the spirit of a man 
will sustain his infirmity. That's talking about your attitude. But a wounded spirit, look what it says, who could bear it? A wounded spirit speaks of a bad attitude. Like, like Saul. Someone like Saul have no faith in God, no trust in God. Saul had a wounded spirit. He did. He didn't have a healthy spirit. In fact, he had an evil spirit. The Bible tells us that was troubling him. It was tormenting him. He had a distressing spirit. We, we, we already studied that in 1 Samuel chapter 16 in verse 14 and 15. And also in our chapter that we studied in 1 Samuel 18 in verse 10, he's still carrying this, this bad spirit, this miserable attitude, this miserable spirit that led him to suicide. So the wounded spirit is feeling down in the dumps. Ever been there? You ever been there? I've been there. Greater Christian than you and I have been there. That's a wounded spirit. You need to stay out of there. Don't, hang, don't stay too long there. Get out of there. A wounded spirit speaks of an inner bad attitude of hopelessness, even deep depression, loss of interest in life. Why? No trust in God. Why? No faith in God. That's what happens when we get our eyes off the Lord. And, the, and we, we focus on the circumstance and the problem. The problem gets bigger. And it's going to paralyze your faith. You're trusting God. And the result is hopelessness, deep depression, even loss of interest of life. And that only adds to their physical problems. That's going to add more to your problems. If a person is experiencing physical disease and suffering and has a wounded spirit, that becomes unbearable because this becomes a double problem. Now you got a double problem. A man's spirit, a man's good inner attitude can sustain all kinds of trials and physical infirmities, but a wounded spirit is far more difficult to endure. I believe emotional problems are often more serious to endure than physical problems. That's why we got to keep our attitude right and keep our spirit right and keep our heart right. So important. You know, we got, we got a, a lesson there from Saul. We could learn a lot about attitudes, about dealing with our attitude when we face problems. Things don't go our way. When we get mistreated, when people don't treat us fair. Keep a good attitude. Keep a sweet spirit. Keep your eyes on the Lord. That's going to help you sustain and endure. Amen? Because if now, if you, if you, if you got a wounded spirit and you're discouraged and you don't keep your spirit sweet, now you're going to be bitter. Now you're going to have double discouragement, double problem. The Bible tells us in Proverbs chapter 17, verse 22, it says, a merry heart do a good like a medicine. That means a good, joyful attitude can be effective as a medicine. That's the Bible. That's the Bible. This doesn't mean that we don't need doctors or that we don't need medicine. This does not mean that a good, joyful attitude is going to cure your disease or your cancer or your arthritis. It means that a good, joyful attitude can sustain the person during the period of suffering. That's what it means. That's what is important that we keep a good attitude, a good spirit. So, in Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10, right? I just want to give you Nehemiah, just the last line of that verse, a long verse, but just the last line is powerful. In Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10, it says, The joy of the Lord is your strength. I mean, put that together with what Jamie's saying, right? When you face trial, have a good attitude. Why? Have a joyful attitude. Why? Keep trusting the Lord, amen? Don't get bitter. Don't get sour. Don't get a wounded spirit. Because you're going to end up very depressed. Very discouraged, amen? And you lost the battle. The joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord brings strength. 
You want the joy of the Lord? I think if you want the joy of the Lord, you know what kills the joy of the Lord? Sin. Sin. Disobedient to God. That's what happened with Saul. That's why you have no joy of the Lord. You want the joy of the Lord? Confession of sin. Repent of sin. Now bring your joy back. Come clean with the Lord. Amen? Sin, disobedient to God, robs your joy in your life. And if it robs your joy, it's going to rob God's strength in your life. Because the joy of the, of the Lord is your strength. You want the joy of the Lord to carry you through difficult times? You want God's strength to carry you through difficult times? Repent and ask God to forgive you of your lack of faith in God. Ask God to forgive you of your bad attitude. And that goes for me too. Amen. It is the joy of the Lord that is our strength. And when we have the joy of the Lord, I believe we have faith in God. We have the strength of God. We have a good inner attitude. We have clean hearts. You can't have the joy of the Lord when you got to confess sin in your life. Somebody who got the joy of the Lord is somebody who got a clean heart. They're trusting God. They're confessing sin. And when you got that, we have patience. We have endurance to keep moving forward for God. Because that's exactly what suffering does. It builds patience, James says. Endurance, spiritual strength. Saul did not deal with his bad attitude. His lack of faith in God. Saul lost the battle. It was his fault. Saul should have gone to the Lord with his attitude and repented. He didn't. He didn't. And it got worse and worse. And you need to deal with your attitude between you and God. I need to deal with my attitude between me and God. So we could learn a lot from this Wednesday night Bible study from 1 Samuel chapter 18 from Saul and David about dealing with our attitudes. Our attitudes need to be controlled by faith in God, not by bad circumstances. Amen? I think it's Philippians chapter 4 in verse 4 where the apostle Paul was in jail, bad circumstances, in prison, when he wrote the book of Philippians, which is the book of joy. That's the theme. And he says, rejoice in the Lord always. I said again, rejoice in the Lord. It's in the Lord. You rejoice. Keep that joy of the Lord. It's your strength. Keep your trust in God. Keep your attitude right. Keep your spirit right. Keep your heart right. You know, someone said, faith is living without scheming. I like that. Faith is living without scheming. I mean, I, I love that, that quote. That, that's what we've been writing down. Faith is living without scheming. If you are living by faith in God, if you're really trusting God, you don't need to manipulate. You don't need to cut corners. You don't need to lie. You don't need to deceive people. You don't need to harm people. You don't need to hate people. You don't need to scheme. You put your faith in God. You're trusting God. You commit your ways to the Lord, and the Lord will strengthen you, and he will take care of your life. Amen? That's the attitude we need to have. Amen? Life's not easy. Life is rough. But we need, that's why we need the Lord. Amen? David had a good, joyful attitude because he trusted the Lord when his faith was tested. And by the way, your faith is going to get tested. As long as you are in this body and you're breathing God's air and you're still on this earth and you're not in heaven yet, your faith is going to continue to be tested with problems and suffering. Have a good attitude, amen? So God could use that suffering to build patience and spiritual strength and endurance and stability and maturity. And we see that in David's life. You see the contrast? Who had the rotten attitude? Saul. Who had a wounded spirit? Saul. Who had a good spirit, sweet spirit? David. They both face problems. Look at 1 Samuel, the, the verse that Brother Jerry led us into read, 1 Samuel chapter 18, because this is the verse I want God, the Holy Spirit, to just kind of inject it and to, 
and to just uh, sink it in your heart. So every time you read 1 Samuel chapter 18, when you do your Bible reading, that, that verse just, just, just pop out. Look at 1 Samuel 18, 14. And David behaved himself wisely in all his ways, and the Lord was with him. I mean, he had a good spirit, a good attitude in facing difficult times, because he was facing difficult times here. The circumstances were not easy here. I, I, I want to show you before I close this, this message, three different ways that David's faith was tested and he passed the test with a good attitude. And let me give it to you first. It was by popularity. Popularity, look at 1 Samuel. Go to 1 Samuel chapter 18. Look at verse 6. We, we covered this verse, but it's worth covering it again for emphasis. 1 Samuel chapter 18, just to show you that David, his faith, different ways, three ways that his faith was tested. And he passed the test with a good spirit, with a good attitude because he had faith in God, not in himself. Not even in the circumstances. And, and, and it says in 1 Samuel, at first it was by popularity, 1 Samuel chapter 18. If you notice verse 6. And it came to pass as they came when David was returned from the slaughter of the Philistine. That's, that's when he defeated Goliath. That the woman came out of all the cities of Israel singing and dancing to meet King Saul with tabrets, with joy, and with instruments of music. And the woman answered one another as they played and said, Saul has slain his thousands. And David, his ten thousands. Now, we know that David killed giant Goliath, right? But for the people, that was big. That was big. Because everybody was afraid. For, for, for the people, they were like, man, this guy killed that giant. Nobody wanted to fight him. That's like, for them, that's like killing 10,000 people. So they're, 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 they're elevating David because of that victory. And Brother Jerry, you were right. The people were wrong by doing that because the one that was king was Saul, not David. But David lost respect for them. It was, I mean, Saul. Saul lost respect for them. He lost the respect because of his life. Look at the way he lived. No faith in God. So he brought it up by himself. Verse, seven, verse 8, and Saul was very wroth. And the same displeased him, and he said, They have ascribed unto David ten thousands, and to me they have ascribed thousands. And what can he have more but the kingdom? So David was popular with the people and handled it well. He didn't let it get it through his head. He stayed humble. But Saul's heart was filled with envy and hatred when he heard that David had more praise than he did. You see how David handled himself well with a good attitude? But in another, another way that he, his face was tested, he passed his test not only by popularity, he didn't get puffed up, he stayed humble. He, he was not concerned about the praise of man. He's concerned about the praise of God, God's glory. That's what consumes him, amen? That's what caused him to, to, to defeat the Goliath. It was all the glory of God, amen? That doesn't impress David, all this, all this man's applause, the praise of man. He overcame that with a good attitude. And then, not only by popularity, but number two, by demotion. By demotion, and I mean, when I mean demotion, I mean the act of reducing, of, of reducing uh, a lower position to somebody. And, 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 and in 1 Samuel chapter 18, in verse 5, look what it says in 1 Samuel chapter 18, in verse 5. And David went out, whether soever Saul sent him, and he behaved himself wisely, and Saul sent him over the man of war. Stop right there. This verse suggests that David was the head of Saul's personal bodyguard. That high position. But in 1 Samuel chapter 18, in verse 13, look what it says. 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 13. It says, therefore Saul removed him from him and made him his captain over a thousand and he went out and came in before the people. So we see here, now Saul removed him from that position. Now Saul demoted him to being the captain of 1,000 men. Did this change David? Did David caught a bad attitude because of that? No, 
And he knew he was king too. He, he was anointed. No, his faith was in the Lord, and he continued to serve and honor his boss, Saul, with a good attitude, even after this, after he was demoted. In 1 Samuel chapter 18, notice verse 12. It says, and Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with him and was departed from Saul. And if you jump to verse 15 of 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 15, it says, wherefore, when Saul saw that he behaved himself very wisely, he had a good attitude, good spirit, he was afraid of him. So this great attitude of David made Saul more afraid of David because Saul knew that God departed from him and have given the blessings to David. And it's his fault he forfeit the blessings because of his rotten attitude, his lack of faith in God. He should have repented and trust God. Because David's God was Saul's God too. Amen? By the way, I think about that. He was afraid because God was all over him. You can't touch a man who has God all over him. You can't harm a man who is blessed by God, who is loaded with the blessings of God. Amen? Don't try to hurt him because you're fighting God. You don't want to fight God. Ask Pharaoh. He fought God when he was trying to hurt Moses, and he ended up losing. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 28, verse 20, a faithful man should abound with blessings. That was David. A faithful man should abound with blessings. You want blessings? Be faithful. Be faithful during trials. Even when people don't treat you right. Still love God and love people and forgive that person and don't ever, ha don't ever have any hatred towards that person. Love your enemies. Amen? Amen. Because a faithful man abounding with many blessings. You want the blessings of God? Be faithful. Be faithful to church. Be faithful in your Bible reading. Be faithful in your prayer time. Be faithful in your witness and telling people. Be faithful in keeping your spirit sweet. Amen? And your right attitude towards God. It takes real faith to experience a demotion before the eyes of the people and still maintain your humility, your sweet spirit, your sweet spirit, and your good attitude. Even when, when he, would, he reduced them to a lower grade, a lower position, he still kept a good attitude. He kept doing what saw his boss told him what to do. Whatever he told him, he did it with a good attitude. He wanted to please his boss. What an attitude, amen? Number three, there was three different ways that David's face was tested, and he just responded by faith. He kept a good attitude, a good spirit. I said by popularity, number one. I said by demotion, number three, by disappointment. Number three, by disappointment. If you look at, you know, in 1 Samuel chapter 17, we're not going to go there, but in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 25, remember what Saul had promised the man who will find and defeat Goliath? Remember that he promised him two things? Does anybody remember? I don't expect you to remember, Brother Jerry, you remember? What was it, Brother Jerry? Yeah, tax deduction, amen, tax-free. You have to pay taxes, amen. And another thing was, I give you my daughter. And that was in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 25. Saul had promised one of his daughters to the man who defeated Goliath. Did Saul fulfill his promise? No. No. That showed how shaky Saul was. He was not a man of his word. We need to be men of our word. Amen? We need to mean what we say. And keep your word. Amen? And, um, but in, in 1 Samuel chapter 18, look at verse 19. 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 19, it says, But it came to pass that at the time when Merab, Saul's daughter, should have been given to David, that she was given into Adriel, the Mahalatite, to wife. So he did not keep his word. Instead, his daughter was given to another man. Now we know, we know, and I, and I repeat, we know that that's not the reason why David defeated Goliath. 
David was appalled when he heard what? That's what he's trying to motivate people to fight him? How about God's glory? This guy's blaspheming God's name. This guy's defying the, the, the living God. And, and uh, uh, you guys allowed that? Isn't that a cause? So we know that it was not because of he wanted his daughter. It was for the glory of God that he killed Goliath. That's the reason why he did it, for God's glory. But we see here that, then we see here in 1 Samuel chapter 18, in verse 20, look at what it says, and Michal, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, Saul's daughter loved David. And they told Saul, and the thing pleased him. And Saul said, I will give him her, that she might be a snare to him, and at the hand of the Philistine may be against him. Wherefore Saul said to David, Thou shalt this day be my son-in-law, in one of the twain. So we see now that Saul tried to use his other daughter, Michal, as a tool to slay David. And how David respond? Good attitude. I mean, he's just trusting the Lord. David's faith was tested in those three areas. First, by popularity. I mean, he didn't, he didn't live for the praise of man, and we should not live for the praise of man. I mean, you want to be popular? Be popular in having big trust in God. Let that make you popular, amen? Having a good, sweet spirit when you face trials or light, let that make you popular, because that could impact others, amen? Maybe others could catch the attitude and come to Christ. Amen? So his faith was tested in those three areas by popularity, by demotion, by disappointment, and he passed the faith test by keeping a good attitude. Keep trusting God. So what's the message for us tonight? I believe it's God wants us to cast the attitude of David and avoid the attitude of Saul. That's the message for us tonight, amen? Hey, we need to, the, the spirit of man will sustain his infirmity, but a wounded spirit, who could bear? It's important that we keep a good attitude, amen? Keep a sweet spirit. Keep trusting God with all your heart. Amen. Let's stand on our feet. Every head bowed, every eye closed. You heard the message. I said enough. The invitation is open for those who want to respond to the message.